to, as I start to attack this leg, what we typically do is we typically turn the knee to the center to get heel exposure. We go here. What his natural reaction is, is to spin his body free, keep swimming, spin, spin, spin the knee out, and spin out, spin all the way. Yes. And he gets his leg all the way out. And I lose knee line control. So what we'll do to, to uh, in a breakaway, link the straight option system to the cross option system. If as he starts to try to turn, slow down now, watch it, watch what I do. I control his heel like this. I place his heel right here on my side. And then I allow my right foot to pass. So as he rolls through, really slow, watch how I switch his heel to the inside of my hand. So as he rolls through, I lock up the same copy, he rolls, and he gives me the cross ashi position. Right the thing along the way. So we're linking the straight ashi to the uh, cross ashi position. This is off of him. All I'm doing, of course, he's using a turnout method, and he's falling into a uh, uh, more uh, devastating position. As we start to turn real slow, I lock up his heel. Number one thing is I control his heel. I pull out my hook and I lock up the sunkaku. As he starts to roll, this is the key thing, guys. We want to switch his foot to the other side. Okay, as he sits through, I end up in a position where I can attack the heel. Let's go over some more details on how to recover the leg and not lose the knee line. As he rolls through, right, if I stay here, he rolls through. Right? And I try to attack this heel here. Oftentimes the guy continues turning and he hides his leg. Very common, yeah. So watch what, what we'll do to kind of hedge against it a little bit. As he rolls, right, even if I don't catch his heel mid-roll, I bring my head straight over his knee line. Watch what I do this. I get my head right above his knee. So now when he goes to extract his knee outward, it's really, really difficult. And when he goes to continue to roll, it's always easy for me to catch his far leg and to go into the double trouble position. And this is typically where we go for all of our secondary leg dilemmas that we, we've talked about. We go for our breaks here, he pulls that back, we attack the heel, all those different attacks. So let's look at it again. We go from the Remy Ashi from the, from the supine position where I'm down, and I start to extract the heel. So I turn everything in. Now, a big component is as your partner starts to continue to roll, you have to allow this hook to pass. We control the heel, we lock up our figure four. He rolls through, I switch his heel to the other side. My only goal now is to get my head above his knee. From here I can look for the far leg, and look for my secondary leg breaks, and then look for my heel hook uh, on the primary leg. Again, never, never fret though, you can always sit up here and reflect right back at the heel. Never, never a problem. But if you feel like the guy is already threatening to kind of turn out, I would look to collect the far leg first, and then go for some sort of dilemma creation so that we can eventually get back to the heel. All right, guys, let's try that one on three. One, two, three. Look, look, look. We actually can, but it becomes really tricky because kick your leg free. Yeah, like this happens. You start getting extended. You start hiding his heel. Yeah, it becomes a problem. So let's try to do it the way, you know, the, the perfect way. So we, we get good knee lock control and we split with a knife hand. The knife hand then becomes a lever. The lever is really strong against his, his straightened leg. His, his straightened leg kick down, very weak. No angle on the leg, very good. And then from here, I'm not opposed to this. I actually like the two on one grip. I don't use it as much anymore. I tend to use a backhand. That's one of the favorite ones to do. Because now I have this kind of contradiction of force. And then I can place it. Am I gonna go to my other shoulder? No reason. Yeah, go straight to the, the over rack grip. And then from here, when he starts to pull this leg out, first of all, don't let him do that, but if it does, we can easily re-enter into a, an inside and top position we can start to attack. All right, we're gonna start to blend a little bit more. You ready? And now we're going into a reverse Ashi system. We're not gonna get intricate with it, but we're gonna try it on. If I'm having a hard time finishing my training partner for whatever reason, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collect. Uh, it, this actually works really well when he's trying to hand fight you. Like he's here, he doesn't want me to break his leg, for reason. so I'll start to grab, I'll reach over, and then pull him to the side. So even let's say you pull in your elbow, that's more realistic, a strong guy. I'll start to take any variance of an underhook grip. We don't get, we actually, in learning this, we don't really think about, like, I have to be under his legs. If I can collect both of his legs, I'll take both of his legs. Uh, that's usually not the case though. So if I can get one, this is fine. And then from here, I start to come up and enter into our reverse Asha system. As soon as we get to the reverse Asha system, it's inevitable that he'll do what? Figure four his legs. He knows I'm gonna knee bar him either way, if he keeps his leg extracted. So I'm sitting on him, 
and I have knees tight, and I'm hiding my heels close to the body as, as possible. And I'm sitting on his sternum. Now, as soon as I get to this position, I never, it's gonna be ironic, but I never want him to let his, I don't never want his legs to slide below my knee. I'm actually gonna pull his legs tighter. See that? Nice and tight. Now, how do I break the grip? Two issues we have with the reverse Ashi position is alignment and breaking the knot. This is a tight knot. If I go to just pull his foot out, it's never gonna happen, there's a closed wedge. So how do I do it? Simple, I grab the toes with my linear hand, I grab the heel with my other hand, both linear grips notice, and I focus on turning his toe towards his knee. If I pull straight up, uh, do a back heel down, back heel, impossible. But watch how weak he is when I start to turn his heel this way. And from here, I can easily de-knock his legs. And now this is where it gets a little tricky. I want to get my right knee to the mat. Here. I bring my head to his foot, and I take an over wrap through. Now he's in double trouble from the reverse position. From here, I can figure for my legs. I usually elect to take a three-quarter sinkaku, control the calf, and we go straight in on the break. We have a break here, and in a much smaller way, we have a break on the secondary leg. Let's look at that again. We're going to go straight from here. We're going to go straight from the cross option position. The inside to top. He's hand fighting me, so he's defending against my, my inside heel, and we don't want to waste any time. So we go on the head, we pull him, we all balance him. We take an under wrap break. You can use him over. We take an under wrap break. And then from here, we focus on one thing. And that's extracting our leg and getting up to our knee. So I get up. And I can do that by switching my grips. Watch my right hand. I can switch my grip to his armpit and use this to kind of pull myself up. Okay. And now as soon as he locks the figure four, where do I want to put his foot? Above my knee line. Pull the knot tighter, ironically. It's kind of contradictory, but you don't want his, his legs below your knee. So this is reverse option. I'm facing away from him. Now I attack the heel and the toes. Turn his top leg towards your knee, open the knot, Get your knee to the ground. From here, you never reach for the foot from an elongated space, kick your leg away. I miss the leg. I bring my head towards his foot, and then I over wrap. From here, I lock up to three quarters in copper, which is essentially just cross feet. I control the calf, I punch through, and you get an inevitable break. This is an incredibly bad break. And from here, I can grab the toes, and we do a toe hold on the second leg. So you can get it a variety, variety of different ways to control it. Yeah, that's not good. He's doing a great job of hand fighting. I come inside, pull, I take an under wrap grip. From here, I'm focused on getting my hand to his armpit. Now, don't try to just drive into him like this. Your left leg is going to block you. You have to extract your leg and link them up. See this? In figure four, I pull the chain tight. Do your grip, knee to the mat, head tight. Lock, calf, underneath, break, or break. Let's try it guys, on three, one, two, three. All right, if I land here, and I manage to lock up the far side leg control, let's look at what we can do in, in creating some break options. Uh, a really basic option that we always have is to secure the leg, just like to dig and knife hand through the center, and get his leg right on my shoulder, so that I can start to expose his heel. As you can see here, there's an exposure of the heel. Another option we have that I want us to focus on is passing this leg to the other side of my head. We do that by a physical grip, or we can even tunnel our knuckles through this and we start to pass. But when I go here, I'm actually going to trap his leg in this position. Now, when he goes to pull out, it's very, very difficult. I have both legs completely controlled, and I have wedges all over his body. And from here, I can start to reflect back to the heel. But what's cool about this is even if Sway does manage to pull this leg out, the primary leg out, I can always re-enter into a cross position where I can go back into the, uh, the cross option position and secure the knee line a little too in the same mode. Okay. There's always an option for me. So, one last time. Up here. I managed to get that second leg, which is a big deal. But now we need a way to create space between his two heels. So if his heels are close in proximity, it's always going to be harder to get the break. So what do we do? We control the knee line, nice and tight. We create a knife hand through the opening, and we get his heel right up on our shoulder, and we control the leg. Here, we start to duck our hand through, 
when he passes his hand to the opposite, his foot rather to the opposite side, not over our knee though. Head goes back and I lock up right around that ankle, almost like an Achilles lock. Notice that I didn't place his leg and spin out. It's still on the inside of my legs. From here, I can always reflect back to the, uh, to the actual primary break that I wanted, which is the heel of the case. But don't worry if he does free his leg up. If he does, there's always an option to pull him back in, kick our outside leg back to the inside, and lock up a figure four uh, and start attacking him once again. So it's a lot of the same. We can lock up, we can get his leg right on our shoulder, we can start to pass his leg over, we lock, he pulls his leg out. I can always configure my body so I can lock up a some cockle on the inside, and it's a rinse and repeat drill. We can keep going over and over, up until the point where I eventually get his heel and get the break. All right, let's try that out. I'll three guys, one, two, three.